Exeva vile tungu to kumsi zufa koloni chani fundi lesi no mna subscriber na ma follow enter mulele guys welcome back man to another amazing video. Bafeli I'm so excited. Thank you so much for joining this damn Dizo family. Bafeli remember tina we are climbing a ladder and leaving it there for someone else to climb because there is enough space for all of us at the top. Those are good today we have an amazing video. It is a response to what you guys have been been asking. Damn Dizo tell us about your study timetable. Damn Dizo how do I balance? How do I plan my time? How do I manage my time, how do I balance certain subjects? But when I got you today, was sharing that explicitly. We're not hiding anything, my friend. If you are wondering what qualifies me to give you this kind of advice, what damn days are going to in his grade 12 final? Got seven distinctions with five of them in the 90s. Young tall, then throughout the year, got grade 12, seven distinctions, seven distinctions. So, my friend, I have a little bit of knowledge that I can share with you. So, stick around, give a food. You know, we don't waste time. Say one girl. So, Bafedu, before I start and divulge Gunya, how my schedule used to look like so that it informs how yours should look like, I want to create some ground rules. These ground rules, if you live by them, you will basically understand why we do what we do. Why do we make the sacrifices that we make? So first of all, my friend, the first thing that you need to do is to uh, commit yourself to being an academic weapon. Commit yourself to sacrifice. Do not be scared of sacrifice. Sacrifice time, sacrificing friends, sacrificing sleep, sacrificing anything you need to sacrifice to reach this ultimate goal of these marks that you want. Because now this is operation distinctions. So I need people that watch these videos to be at that level of thinking. And fundamental was a survivor. I don't want survivors. I want people who are going to thrive. So in order for you to thrive, you need to commit to a certain level of sacrifice in high school. To a certain level of excellence that will demand a lot from you. Another thing that you need to do, you occupy every pocket of time that you have during the day with studying. It sounds crazy. But it's doable. Every opportunity that you get, even when you're walking home, you're walking to school, occupy that with the level of studying. During break time, half of the break you eat, half of the break you finish up work. You occupy every little space of time with studying, especially towards the end of the year. When other people are running low, are running on fumes, we're not fogukia seven. Nyusa ikiya. That is why when my teachers saw my marks, they realized that. From January to December, my marks were doing this. Regardless of how difficult the exam kept becoming, but my marks were doing this. Because I kept committing myself to the sacrifice. I kept committing myself to the struggle. Alright, Ibafi, let me provide context now of my situation in grade 12. I'm going to tell you now my schedule when I was still in my peak. Peak, peak, peak academic weapon, academic excellence. What I was doing. Very crazy. Number two, I was also living alone in grade 12. My dad is a pastor, he had to leave because they were changing the congregation, going somewhere else. So I, well, I was left behind and I rented a place. So in anything that I wanted to implement, I had a lot of leeway. But I'll tell you how to go about it if you're living with parents and whatnot, which is most likely the case. Let's say now on a weekday, now how does my day look like? Wake up 6 a.m. in the morning, prepare like everybody else. 7 a.m. I'm leaving now to go to school. I walk normally 30 minutes. Then that 30 minutes walk to school, it's not because sometimes the distance is long. It's because I'm walking a bit slower because I'm reading something. Anything that is light, like definitions. I like to memorizing, okay, memorizing physics definitions. What is the force? What is Newton's second law? Newton's first law? Newton's third law? You know, like I would literally be playing around with that until I get to school. Yeah, but I get to school. Then one thing that I would resign myself to is to ensure Ugoti, if there is any period that is free at school where the teacher does not show up, I use that period to do any homework that we were given at school. Ne? Or start on any project that we were given at school. Or prepare for any assignment that we were given at school. So I'd use any free period. That one, I would not be making noise with friends. Because, guys, I was crazy. I had this goal that I wanted to reach. That I want you guys to be occupied by kind of the same spirit in mind. That was my role. Ugoti, anytime I get an opportunity, I'll study, I'll complete a task. Then during break time, 
half of my break i use it to eat half of the break i use it to complete continue completing these homeworks fine then get me after school then after school that's man about three then at three i had a study group that i had with the top 10 learners as a school and then i started at the beginning of grade 12 i think actually end of grade 11 i think then once we started the study group all we do is parallel study these guys were very intelligent we just parallel study but it's nice when you find an interesting question then you can attack it together just to gain perspective you yeah, well, find interesting ways of solving problems like being around people with the same kind of mindset are gonna stick with you so we start there at 3 then end at 5 p.m at 5 p.m i walk home around half past five i arrive or quarter to six then my concern is eating ensuring that i'm comfortable maybe take a nap if i have to take a nap if i'm feeling very very tired then after that by eight no matter what happens I must be at another study group. My class, there was about 26 of us in my class, but we started a study group, but we started as about four people. So we ended up being like 26 people. The entire class came through the study group. But it started at 8 till midnight. Yeah, until like midnight, then I would quickly run home because my home was not far from the study group. In that study group, that is where we actually learned. Like, we learned and taught each other, like we had games that we used to play that helped us a lot. And we did this throughout Metric Game of Eight. So you need to commit to something. And this is literally my day to day schedule. And sometimes I arrive home at midnight. If I'm not comfortable with how much content I covered at the study groups, what I will get to do at home is that maybe from 1 till 2 a.m. in the morning, I'm going to push something, push past papers or do something that I wanted to cover, but I could not cover because I was in multiple study groups. Yeah, I'm told. Then I sleep again, wake up at 6, then same routine, same routine. So that was literally my schedule during the week. And to be quite honest with you guys, it was not as very fluid as it sounds that I'm talking to you now. There were days, Buffet, where I'd be studying, Galoba 2 a.m. Labo, and sleep on the desk. Ne? Sleep on the desk and wake up, Galoba 6, and like, damn, I slept on the desk. Still wearing uniform sometimes. Wash my face, brush my teeth, fuck it all on. I go, routine. And I was not bothered by that. Because when you're clear about what you want, you're willing to go that extra mile. So for some of you, how you can adapt from this or what you need to take away from this are the key things. Things like creating rules that you will live by as an individual. Not as friends, not as people, as an individual who wants to succeed. So rule number one is manipulating those pockets of space that you might have. Rule number two could be starting a study group with people who are like-minded. Rule number three, eliminating all this discussion. WhatsApp, nam delete our metric. Other people are like, we have class study groups or WhatsApp study groups or something. I don't know, Buffett, what works for you, but me deleting WhatsApp was the best thing I ever did. Yeah, but, but yeah, it's up to you guys. Basically, creating rules for yourself that will govern how you will act in grade 12. Another important thing, Buffett, is to ensure that you have a conversation with parents. Have a conversation with your parents about any decisions that you're making at academy. Your parents want to see you succeed most of the time. And they are willing to basically help you and push you to get to that point. It will be very exciting for them when their child comes to them. Baba Zali, I want to change my journey. I want to be very great. Please, um, can you lower the amount of time I spend maybe cooking or washing dishes or doing whatever, doing house chores. I would really like to devote this time. I'm starting a study group with these friends and around this time or whatever. Or I want to, I want to start a study group with some friends who live there. But don't, 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 don't. How can we make this happen? Parents, most of the time, always willing to make the plan for you to achieve things academically. So, Buffet, to my weekend schedule was actually quite similar to my weekday schedule because I was attending extra classes by Kutlanong Promets. So I would enter at about 8 a.m. with extra classes there too, and end at about 3 p.m. They gave us food get in between us so under Maths and Science, which made life so much easy because it means that if I attend tutoring on Saturday, Maths and Science, I have to do less of Maths and Science on the weekend. So I have time for Life Sciences, time for ELO, time for Languages, time for whatever. We have a consumer studies. Then I'd come back at about 4 ish half past four. Then after that, sleep eat do whatever i need to do wake up academics buffet all assignments all projects and focus on other subjects as well then next day sunday same thing we entered kutlanong promets extra classes at about 10 ended at about one go home do the same thing as i've mentioned i was living alone so i had all the leeway to do what i want when i get home but for you guys, you need to have a conversation with your parents and strike a schedule so that you know your cooking times, you know your cooking schedule if you're cooking or washing dishes or whatever, and ask for any form of privacy that you can get. Or if you have a friend's place where you can go have a study group with them, that is also quite preferable. So my favorite, I'm gonna share secrets now with you guys of how to actually balance these subjects of yours. What is key 
for me it is to know what is going on in each subject and know what is going to happen what is going to be taught how many topics are we going to cover this term what are these topics if you know this you can apply the concept of staying ahead but if you ask for one thing from Mutam Dizo, and that one thing would be to stay ahead consumer studies Dam Dizo, how did you do it i stayed ahead i was two topics ahead of my teacher how did i get ahead i was studying beforehand because I knew I had a conversation with my teacher. I told me, we're going to start with interior design and we're going to go with uh, foodborne diseases and do that. So me, I must study these quickly so that when we do them in class, I already covered them. In life science, which one are we going to study with? Start with, and oh, we're going to start with this digestive system and we're going to do, do that. Me, when I get home, my aim is to stay ahead so that when I get to class, other kids are hearing this thing for the first time, they're still confused. What is going on? Me, guys, I'm correcting my understanding. I'm like, oh, I, oh, I mean, Jalan, then. then after class, I'm like, oh, ma'am, no, I thought it means this and that. Standing ahead is the best, guys. Another rule is that maths and science, you do it every day. Even if it's in a form of a past paper, an activity or whatever, you do it every single day. You, you slot it in. And another important thing, now, I never created my schedule according to time. And you say that people are like, I'm going to study maths from Banban to Banban. Studying Dutila from Banban to Banban. I did my studying according to tasks. Tasks completed. That's all. If I wanted to complete five questions of your past papers, that's what I'm going to do. Then when I'm completed that, then I go move to the next subject. The subject has the homework that I need to do. Then it has this topic that I need to cover. I do those things and I do that. I do not over exaggerate what I can complete. Then I realize that all the tasks that I wanted to complete when I get home, I completed them. Then I can do some extra work. And that makes you feel good because it feels like you're achieving something. So my friends, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, have meetings with your teachers, know what topics are going to come and in what order for each and every subject and use whatever the textbook they recommend to study ahead. That will work and it will help. Another important thing in my schedule for me was a sense of urgency, Buffett. I was, I had a sense of, if I got an assignment today, I'm going to start on it today so that I know what I need to do, what I need. If it's due next week, by this week at least, I must be done. So that I do not submit rush, rush work. Otherwise, you're going to receive rush, rush marks. I have enough time. Sometimes I even complete this task and give it to the teacher beforehand and be like, ma'am, I completed it. Did I complete it in the right way? Is this what we were kind of looking for? Then she says, yes, and give me a few pointers. I go back, I finish up the task and I get my grade marks. Another key thing, Buffet, with balancing subjects is taking everything seriously. Regardless of how small it is. Now, Buffet, I even took the oral. I'd present the oral like I'm standing with theater, Buffet. Like, I'd be so serious. Even if it was a surprise oral or whatever, unprepared and don't do it. I would present like it's the end of the world. Nobody will end with 10 marks, no with 5% of whatever course. But I ensured that my class was supportive of whatever I do in the exam. So then, yes, but I get exam and I already have good marks. So everything, every little task that you're given, now we hello to my sense of PE. The school comes to watch, we give them a hell of a performance. Whatever you do, give 100% regardless of how small that task is. And another important thing in your balance, you're seeking was to balance the subjects, is to reflect upon every assessment. Now what you do is that, you do a test, you do 25 out of 50. At yes, this thing went better, I'm going to work really hard next time. I forget, I feel it. Then after that, next, uh, preparation again. Preparation, work hard and halal. Same thing, 26 out of 50. What am I doing wrong? I don't know. You do not reflect. There's a big step that you're missing called reflection. Whenever you get back your test results, open and see where you went wrong. To understand what you know and what you don't know. Then after that, you go to the teacher. If you're not sure now, ma'am, why did I get this for that or whatever? Especially these ones, as Teti or Life Science or Languages, don't, don't, don't. Why did I get that? I don't know. I know it's because you messed up here and there. Yeah, you need to strengthen here and there. Then you know where to strengthen. Then after that, you can solve the problem so that you can perform better when you perform poorly use the same method that allowed you to perform poorly and expect a different result i saw the answer get on buffet i have so much to say but so little time i think when i actually created part two for this video but another important thing that i wanted to say to you guys before i leave you guys was that exam prep 
does not start the week or the day before the exam. You start preparing for the exam the moment you start on that subject. If go to it topics as till as was a exam, the moment you start studying for the first time, that's when you start preparing for the exam. I wonder what you I don't know I'm gonna revise everything. It's because when you're revising or you are learning the information for the first time, you are just going through nje, 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 rewriting whatever notes are in the textbook. Basically you are recopying a textbook, so I'll copy and paste. You are never really learning and engaging with this thing because exam prep starts the day you first interact with that information. So that when you have to actually revise for whatever exam is coming, you realize, but no man, I know this thing already. I still apply that guys, even in varsity. In varsity, you barely have time. But because I make sure whenever I interact with something, I ensure that I understand it fully so that when I come back, I'm like... Oh, I remember this thing. I even saw it in the clinical platform. I was like this. this, this. So that I do not waste time. But fair to another point that I want to make. I don't want to close the video without making this point. The best way to learn that information and balance your subjects. It is to try and teach as much as you can. It saves you a lot of time. Because you cannot teach something you don't know. And if you have the ability to teach something, it means that you know it very well. It means that for any exam, you will ace it. Because you've taught people. Start by teaching two people in your class. I used to do that. Then after that, those two people become four people. Four people become eight people. Now, I'm talking about, especially in life sciences, especially in, in consumer studies, and these other subjects, your histories, your geos, very, very important because these things are concepts that need to be learned and understood. It's a key that we never tell you about. Yeah, Bafredo, so for the matrix who are writing their final exams soon, Bafredo, I do wish them all the best. I do wish them all the best for their applications and us as be successful and their marks and us as be successful as well. Bafredo, don't forget, that too much exam timetable is already out even. Have your own exam timetable and figure out what can I study when and how am I gonna go about it. Create a plan. If you do not plan, then you plan to fail. Please do not forget to hit or subscribe buffet to hit the notification button so that you're the first to know when Dam Dizor releases another banger like this one. Buffet to write there in the comment section. What do you want Dam Dizor to talk about next? Or do you want a part two on this video? It's up to you. Write there in the comment section, Buffet. Otherwise, remember we climb that ladder, we hold it there for someone else because there's enough space for all of us.